Hello, uh, my name is Ark, and I'm part of the FTC team, Mark at Loxon, 10588, and this is our robot video. So, we have used for this year some uh, a wooden chassis, and we used that mostly because there's a weight limit this year on our, our robots. So, uh, right now our robot weighs like 30, 30 pounds, and um, this, this wooden chassis really helps that weight with uh, our weight. And um, we have this two marker topper as well. It's very simple, and all it does is just go down and go up. And we got this from another team, uh, Wizards.exe. They've also used this uh, design. So we have decided for our robot to use mechanical wheels, mostly because we don't plan on going over the crater for the 2018 to 2019 season. Uh, we have rather used another uh, another thing for that, um, as my friend will explain later on. And we've mostly decided on using these mechanical wheels because it has a lot of degrees of freedom, and you know you can go anywhere you want. So that's why we chose that. So um, this is our lifting system. Uh, we've created two blocking tackle pulleys. It pretty much what it does is it distributes the weight of it through different strings. This has an IMA or ideal mechanical advantage of three because of three weight load pulleys. And, um, and technically there's two of them, so there's six. So this has an IMA of six. And you see back here we have two, two um, motors that can pull it, pull this uh, downwards to lift the robot up. And to, and always, this always wants to go up so this always wants to go up because of the spring, which, um, and then this, will, these motors would then retract inwards and cause the ro cause this to go back down, cause the robot to lift up. This is our uh, claw that we use for. Uh, this is our claw that we use for grabbing onto the uh, lander, and then we just. This is a plastic claw, and um, then then we'll go downwards. Then we go downwards again, and then it just goes back down through these two motors. So we've tried multiple ways, and this was the uh, idea that we uh, pretty much uh, concluded on, and it's worked perfectly so far. So, yeah. Cool. Hi, my name is Ashish Nalakota. I'm a friend of Oik, and I will be explaining the claw and the basket of this robot. So, the reason we decided to use two parts to take the particles and put them over into the lander is because we realized that if we had just one part, it would have way too many degrees of freedom and it would have a lot of chances of breaking, like reaching over and going back up, that's a lot. So, what we decided to do is take that and put it into two different steps. The first step is the claw. So, the claw extends down and once it reaches the bottom and goes over the crater barrier, it would pick up a sphere like this. Like so. Hold up. Like. <laughs> like so. Then, once this is picked up, the claw will reach back up. Keep in mind, this is all just prototype for now. We will CAD the rest of this later to make it all perfect. But once this comes all the way back up, it'll take the sphere and drop it inside the basket. From there, once the claw comes all the way back up, the basket will go over the claw and drop it in the lander like that. And our basket was made super light so that one motor could be lifted with a chain system. This chain system easily lifts this. The electronics of the robot were put in the middle because this space was a space that we had open. Because the pulleys were placed on the middle and bottom and the claw and the basket went around the outside and the hanging went in the back. So we, want, so we noticed that there was space in the middle top, so we put two plexiglass plates which connected to our two rev expansion hubs. These hubs are placed right side uh, facing this way and left side facing this way so that all of the motors that are on this side get connected to the left facing 
expansion hub and all of the motors on the light side get uh, placed on the light side expansion hub. This was placed so that the things would be uh, organized and the motor and the wires wouldn't get in the way and the wires are like going across the whole robot. There's also a little hole on this side of the robot down here. So this is connected to all of the motors uh, that connect to the wheels. And we place, we plan to place our battery somewhere right here, mounted on with Velcro. And our on and off switch is placed right here, connected to a small channel. In conclusion, we tried our best to keep a light and a sturdy robot that would get all of the missions done that we plan to do. We plan to lift the robot in the beginning and uh, hang it at the end. And we also plan to take balls and boxes from over the crater barrier and put them into the lander. So this robot we hope to take very far and we see where this robot hopes to take us as well. Thank you. Can we like move it? Can we move it somehow? Can you move it backwards? There's no point even using the controller with it. This is an autonomous move. Okay. Use the. Yeah, I know. Use the op. I'm not. Use the controller. Should be the one I programmed was autonomous. I couldn't figure out how to make it like a teleop. This is a basic forward op mode. I, I have the I have the one going into the crater. Can you put basic already. backward op mode and see how that works? No, 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 watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Wait, wait, watch out, watch out. No, 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 wait, wait. Okay. Yo, there it goes! Watch out for the new spray ankle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nerve damage. Yo, but it's tilting. It's going at an arc, yeah. Why? Boy. Here we go. Yeah, arc. You guys might have Oh, that's not right, is it? No, 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 it is. There you go. There it is. No, they're not. I'm not this way. What's going on? Turn it off.